I don't see any of our law enforcement agencies ever abusing powers like that and uh, asking people to stop and be searched, even with the powers that they have today in the areas that they have today. This is designed for people who are actually doing things in these residential areas which interfere with the right of people who live in residential estates to enjoy peaceably the places in which they live and to give the power to law enforcement agencies to act in such circumstances as they consider appropriate against those types of individuals who are abusing that area or buying tobacco and making a nuisance of themselves. We need to make sure that our law enforcement agents have the powers necessary to deal with the issues that are being brought to our attention, which I have pledged I will deal with them. I have dealt with them in Laguna and Glasses Estates, and I'm making sure that we can deal with them throughout Gibraltar. Another measure that you're introducing is that you're restricting the sale of tobacco between 8 in the morning and 8 in the evening. Isn't this really rather ineffectual in the sense that most shops aren't open outside those hours anyway? Quite the opposite, actually. I think you'll find that one of the problems that law enforcement tell us they have been having is that people who have retail outlets have been opening at night and uh, at, in the cover of darkness, allowing large quantities to be taken from their shops. And those are the ones that we've seen in, in recent uh, weeks manifesting themselves in exportations other than from appropriate areas. And by doing this, and unfortunately, of course, this will affect all retailers, not just those who have acted improperly. Uh, it will affect all of them, but we are making sure that we're shutting that loophole, but not in a way that affects supermarkets and petrol stations, which have been doing a legitimate trade. Um, and as you rightly say, many legitimate retailers are in any event closed um, between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 in the morning in any event. Is there a particular reason why supermarkets and petrol stations have been exempted? because they haven't in any stage been identified by law enforcement agencies as being involved in the type of trade that we need to curtail. You're also going to restrict the number of boxes that can be kept in any one shop to 30. I would have thought so that there wouldn't be space in most shops for much more than that anyway. You would have thought so. Um, and you know the interesting thing is that we need to ensure that by providing for these quantities, what we're doing is curtailing the sort of illicit activity that I'm telling you it has been brought to the government's attention is sometimes being undertaken by some uh, retail outlets. Look, it may be that we can change that in the future. It may be that we can look at those quantities and where there is a legitimate reason for having larger quantities, maybe a shop that happens to be particularly large and retails a very uh, large number of different types of tobacco, it may be perfectly appropriate in, in such an instance that they are able to be holding more tobacco in, in any particular uh, period of time. But at the moment, it is necessary to take these draconian steps in order to ensure that we curtail activity which has come to law enforcement's attention and which is contrary to what we want to see going on in Gibraltar. This won't happen straight away, but you also intend to limit the number of cigarettes that can be sold to anyone from 1,000 to 200, but this has to go to Parliament first. This is a matter that has to go to Parliament and it's something that will need to be debated by the Parliament. There will be a bill that will propose this measure. Uh, the reason for this measure is that if you look at the amount of tobacco that can be imported into any community uh, country, into any country in the European Union, whether it's the United Kingdom, France or Germany or Spain, the quantity into that blue zone, into the Common Customs Union, is 200 cigarettes. So nobody will be able to accuse us of promoting the, the business of people buying more than they are actually able to take into a community member state. Um, of course, you know, people could go into different shops and buy um, in different shops, and we can't stop people from doing that. But we will be telling people, look, this is the quantity that you can take into Spain and the United Kingdom, which are the two places other than Morocco with which we have direct links. They will be aware of what those limits are, and it will be the limit that can be sold to them in any particular transaction. Now, one thing that these measures don't do is change the amount of tobacco that is considered a commercial quantity, which I believe is 10,000 at the moment. Any reason why not? Well, because we have to get the balance right. And therefore, look, there are many people who smoke in Gibraltar. And there are many people who smoke in Gibraltar and want quantities of tobacco available to them for their own legitimate purpose, i.e. smoking at home and smoking with friends. And we need to get the balance right between controlling what is otherwise a legal commodity that you can have in your possession and how much of that commodity you can have in your possession. If you're not on your way to export it, either through the airport, through the land frontier, or otherwise. So what the red zones do is say you cannot be in possession even of a commercial quantity of tobacco in this area unless you are a resident. 
or you have a legitimate reason which you can explain to an officer that might stop you. We have to get that balance right and it's difficult to get that balance right but I'm erring on the side of the residents and on the side of making sure that people do not have to suffer antisocial behaviour of the sort that we had to eradicate at Laguna and Glasses and we don't want to see becoming rampant anywhere else in Gibraltar. Do you foresee having to take further measures still? Look, it is important for us to make sure that when we act, we act prudently and we act reasonably, but we act to ensure that we deal with the issues that are brought to our attention. And in our conversations with the uh, law enforcement officials that advise the government on this subject, we are satisfied that these measures will have the effect of curtailing that activity which they've identified we have to curtail in the way that they believe it can be curtailed. I remain open to talking to those law enforcement officials in the future about what we, it is that we need to do. In the same way as I remain open in talking to those who have a legitimate trade in tobacco who might feel that we may have got the balance wrong in terms of how far we're going at this stage. They will have to understand that it's necessary to go this far now, but we will always keep our ear to the ground with the commercial entities involved also to ensure that those who are in a commercially uh, appropriate and legitimate trade do not suffer. And we may in the future be able to recalibrate things in a different way.